In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a mega church in America, which is famous for what it calls its seeker-sensitive approach. Seeker-sensitive. Every aspect of the church service is geared towards making unbelievers or spiritual seekers feel comfortable and accepted. So if you were to visit, one of the first things you might notice is that there are no crosses in this church. No crosses. The leaders of the church think that crosses might put off the kind of people they're trying to attract. Contrast that church with another church in Rome, which has a painting in the apse behind the altar. An inscription below the painting reads, Hail flowers of the martyrs, sons of the apostles, by whose outpoured blood and by flames Rome was lit up. The painting is a depiction of what the Emperor Nero did to the first Christians in Rome after the great fire of Rome in AD 64. Could be that Nero himself was responsible for this fire. He wanted to clear the slums of Rome for his own building projects, but he blamed the church. And he had crucified believers covered in pitch and lit as torches in the grounds of his gardens. And that's what's in the mosaic or the painting, the painting in the apse. So as you look at the altar, you look up and you can see that contrast with a church with no crosses. Not so long ago, it was considered right to raise people in the faith by putting before their eyes the witness of the martyrs. It was considered that a true Christian is someone who shares the courage and the faith of the martyrs. That a true Christian is someone who's capable of courageous choices. The prophet Daniel, who we heard about in our first reading, had courage and faith like that. Darius issued a decree that only he was to be worshipped to God for the next 30 days. And scripture says, now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where he, the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God, just as he'd done before. So Daniel is someone else who was put before Christian eyes as an example of faith and courage. There's an extraordinary ancient mosaic from a Christian tomb that's in an archaeological museum in Tunis. In this mosaic, a nude figure with his hands raised in prayer stands on a raised platform while four lions leap up walkways towards him. The mosaic depicts the story of Daniel in the lion's den. But it also calls on the imagery of what the Romans called damnatio ad bestias, a form of execution. This was another way that Romans would kill Christians who refused apostasy. The cry would go up, Christians to the lions. And the Daniel in this mosaic looks like a man set upon by lions in the arena, a Christian martyr. That's you know, the image of the ramps. That's how it was in the arena. There'd be ramps and the, the beasts would come down into the arena, down these ramps. It was meant to inspire faithful Christians with the passion of Daniel and the martyrs who died in the arena with their faith and their strength and their constancy and their endurance. Daniel is the icon of what it is to be faithful in Babylon. But today, the memory of that kind of faith seems to have been eclipsed. I wonder what happened and why. We seem to have forgotten the historical reality that the early church grew rapidly throughout the Orient Empire in the first three centuries by offering a radical, shocking alternative to the culture of the time. Equality, compassion. It grew by challenging people to repent, to turn away from sin, and be faithful to Christ. The first Christians proclaim that this sinful world is facing the judgment of God, yet the future kingdom has broken into the present. The gracious invitation of God is that we should die to sin, to our own selfish preoccupations, to our previous way of seeing the world, and live a new resurrection life in Christ. 
This is what it means. Be baptized, to go down under the water, to die and to rise again. Jesus said to his apostles, if the world hates you, know that it hated me first. St. John's Gospel speaks of the world. On the one hand, God so loved the world, and we are therefore to love and serve the world. But this world, that God loves so much, rejects his invitation, even hates Jesus, and hates his disciples. Jesus warned us about this. He warned us what to expect. We too should love and serve the world. But we shouldn't be surprised if we find ourselves at odds with the world, as faithful Christians always have been. For the true Christian, like Daniel, must be capable of courageous choices. And so it may be that, despite being the established church, we can only remain Christians if we choose to be at odds with the world and with the rest of society, rather than to be at odds with Jesus Christ. Amen.